Damn, I missed that menu. Hey guys, this is Nick, and today we're gonna take a look at Mate, which is the last major desktop environment that I have never used. I've used GNOME 2 a lot in the past, and it is my understanding that Mate is basically the perfect continuation of GNOME 2. So let's see if it still holds up and if it's still up to the challenge in 2021. Do you know what's up to the challenge of monitoring your internet connection though? Today's sponsor, Safing. They are an open source company that develops the Portmaster, an all-in-one network monitoring solution. It allows you to watch everything that comes in or out of your network and then block or allow the stuff you want to take action on globally or on a per app basis. Portmaster is free as in free beer and completely open source. And it also has advanced features like filter lists to automatically block ads trackers or malware, and it can enforce secure DNS over TLS for your whole computer. All these features are easy to access thanks to a simple and legible user interface and you can download it as a deb or an arch package. It's also available on Windows if you need it there as well. Sefing Sportmaster is still in alpha and looking for users and input. The team is super responsive and you can contact them by mail, on Reddit or directly on GitHub. Follow the link in the description to download Portmaster and give the team your thoughts. So what is Mate? So Mate is written mate, but it's pronounced Mate because it derives its name from a tea-like beverage. It was created in August 2011 and it's basically one of the resultant components of the creation of GNOME 3 and its activities style of uh, doing things. Basically, some people wanted the newer underpinnings of GNOME 3 but with a more traditional desktop and they created Cinnamon. And some people wanted to keep GNOME 2 exactly as it was, and these guys created Mate. So Mate might be the functional continuation of GNOME 2, but they still have improved the underpinnings quite a bit. Now the whole desktop itself is underpinned by GTK3, and they also use Dbus and G settings instead of the older components, so the desktop is more in line with the more recent, more modern Linux desktop environments, and it's not lagging so far behind, it's more compatible with them. Not all applications have migrated to GDK3 though, which means that Wayland support is still a ways off, unless you want to use Mir, the display server that Canonical created, as a stopgap solution, but it's pretty hacky. So Mate ships on a lot of Linux distributions, including Fedora, which is the one I'm using to record this video, but you can also find it on Ubuntu, you can find it on Arch, on Linux Mint, basically anywhere that you want to use it, it's available. And today we're just gonna take a look at the vanilla Mate layout, but I know that a lot of you guys think that Ubuntu Mate is one of the definitive editions of Mate, and don't worry, we're gonna take a look at it in the next video. No need to comment that in the YouTube comment section. Actually, yes, please do comment it in the Linux comment section because YouTube loves comments, so forget I said anything. So let's start by taking a look at the desktop itself. And Mate is a fresh breath of nostalgia for me because it's the first Linux desktop I ever used back when I started using Ubuntu in 2006. So the layout is very simple. You have two slim panels on the top and on the bottom of the screen. The top one hosts most system controls like the three part menu, the shortcuts and the system applets. The bottom one lets you interact with windows and desktops with the show desktop button, the window list and the virtual desktop switcher. The menu is one of the things I miss most from the GNOME 2 days. It separates cleanly the applications, the places you'd want to browse, and the system preferences. It's probably the most sensible menu layout I have ever used, and no other desktop I've been working with has ever came close to its practicality. It's really good because you don't have to hunt inside of a global, unique menu for everything. It's split up, it's pre-filtered for you. If you need an application, you just go up the application menu. If you need to go somewhere in your folder structure, you go to the places menu. And if you want to tweak your settings, you go to the system menu. It is super easy to remember, easy to navigate, and super efficient. Now, if you know of such a menu for KDE, I would love to get your recommendations. Now, the rest of the desktop, though, isn't really to my liking anymore. Small icon shortcuts in the top panel just can't measure to a dock in terms of mouse aiming and practicality. And the default applets aren't really information packed or super useful in terms of interacting with your system. For example, the sound applet just gives you volume, without a way to select an audio output or input. The date and time applet doesn't let you see calendar appointments. And there is no notification applet that lets you go back to notifications you might have received and missed. The window list 
isn't really to my liking either, since I'm so used to docs or icons only task managers, and it doesn't feel very space efficient. Now, people that love to have something to do with their desktop will definitely enjoy Mate though, as it comes with these pesky desktop icons, just like GNOME 2 did back in the day. So basically, Mate is literally GNOME 2 as it was back in the day, and that's either a good thing if you use GNOME 2 in the past and you really like it, or a bad thing if you expect more modern features from your Linux desktop environment. Some other things have aged a bit, the lack of animations on the window manager notably. I know a lot of you prefer not using animations to keep things fast, but to me they're a very useful tool to let you know what a window is doing when you interact with it, and not having my virtual desktop slide to the left or right, and only getting a minimal outline when I minimize a window makes things a little less enjoyable and less natural to use. Oh damn it, if I'm gonna spend some time customizing my desktop or ricing it, as the young folks call it, I don't want my windows to turn into small black rectangles while they minimize. I want them to stay window-like. Now of course that's a personal preference and a lot of people choosing to use Mate will definitely prefer it this way, so I can't hold that against it. So basically, using Mate is basically like using GNOME 2. You have a super functional three-part menu, you've got no bells and whistles to distract you from the work that you're trying to do, and you also have something that looks and feels a little bit older and a little bit dated compared to more modern desktops. Now speaking of looks, I use the default Manta theme for GTK, the windows and the icons. Here again, you definitely feel the older GTK look and feel with soft gradients, plain color highlights and big raised buttons. It's pleasing enough to use, although the green tint to the highlights and the icons isn't really my personal preference. The icons look exactly like older GNOME icons in the Tango style, which is not really my thing either, but they're consistent, recognizable and they're colorful. It's a bit refreshing to see a desktop that hasn't gone towards flat design, even though it does make it feel straight out of the early 2000s. You know, when Justin Timberlake was bringing sexy back. Mate makes use of menu bars in their applications, which I'm not a big fan of, but at least it's consistent. All apps have them, from the media player to the file manager, so they didn't go the mix and match route that you can find on Cinnamon, for example. Here again, in the look and feel department, Mate looks exactly like GNOME 2, so it does feel a little bit dated. Now, fortunately, it's a desktop that you can customize to your heart's content. Yeah, Mate is pretty configurable. Probably not as much as KDE or XFC or Cinnamon, but you can still do a lot of things in there. It retains the panel applet system that made GNOME 2 very powerful, and that works like XFC's system, with the added bonus that you can move your applets in real time on the panel, instead of doing so through an ordered list disconnected from the panel itself. You'll find plenty of menus, hardware monitors, disk mounters and other googly eyes in there, and you can create new panels, stack them on the same screen edge, make them auto-hide, expand to the full width of the screen, change their background color, you name it. The default layout can be completely erased to make something that works for you, and that's a great thing. Now, In terms of settings for the desktop itself, Mate gives you both the system menu, sorted between preferences and administration, as well as an all-in-one configuration panel. I personally prefer the menu-style navigation for these config panels, but as that's not something you'll find on any other desktop really, I can understand the need to have a control panel that users would be more familiar with. Windows even has two of these control panels, so it's only fair that Mate gets at least one. Options are numerous here. You have the all-important acceleration profile settings for the mouse, all the options to change the theme, the icons, the mouse cursor, the fonts, the wallpaper and anything else, you can edit the main menu itself and reorder it, you can enable centered window placement, the only right way to place windows, and you can change the default apps for a lot of file types, among a ton of other settings. I couldn't find a way to do interface scaling, it seems you need Mate Tweak, but that wasn't installed in Fedora and didn't seem available in their repo, so I didn't try it out. Fractional scaling doesn't seem available at all though, and since Mate doesn't support Wayland for now, and probably won't until all of their apps are migrated to GDK3, I wouldn't expect support for that to come anytime soon. Now in terms of RAM usage, Mate on Fedora, on a cold boot with 16GB of RAM, uses 1.1 to 1.3GB. It's definitely a bit heavier than XFC out of the box, but barely. So this makes it really suitable if your computer is a potato, or if you really like to have a lot of unused RAM for some reason. Okay, so that first look at Mate is full of nostalgia for me. I used GNOME 2 from about 2006 to 2011, from Ubuntu Dapper Drake back to Ubuntu released Unity, 
it was a desktop that I loved and that really made me love Linux as a whole. It's the desktop that hooked me, made me fall in love with Linux. The specific layout, the fact that it didn't look or feel like Windows or Mac OS was excellent. And I ended up sticking with that layout for a long, long time. So now in 2021, 15 years after I first used it, Mate still holds a lot of appeal. There's that super functional three-part menu. You are not distracted by bells, whistles, tons of notifications, tons of stuff popping up on your screen. It's basically a super simple, super clean experience. Now for people who have started using computers for maybe five or six years, or who came to Linux through Plasma 5 or Gnome 3, Mate will probably feel dated, just like XFCE, because it doesn't follow the most recent desktop conventions. You don't have icons only taskbars. You don't have an expose view for your window. You don't have animations. You don't have notification settings. It lacks a lot of these features. And whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing really depends on you. If you use GNOME 2 in the past, if you want a simple desktop that you can tweak to your liking, but doesn't get in the way, doesn't show you too much stuff, doesn't animate too much, Mate is perfect. If you like your desktop more modern, with more eye candy, with animations, it's just not gonna do the trick for you. For me personally, I've gotten used to the more modern desktops, the animations, the eye candy. I like that, I want that on my desktop, so Mate is not for me, really. But I'm still gonna take a look at a lot of other things, because we haven't seen the default applications, and we also are going to see how you can customize it by taking a look at some distros that offer some customization options, and by trying to do our own layout. But that's for future videos. Now this one was made possible by Slimbook. If you don't know about Slimbook yet, it's a Linux hardware manufacturer and retailer. They're based in Spain, but they ship worldwide. They have a whole variety of desktops and laptops to cover basically any need and any budget. And they have all the keyboard layouts that you can ask them. So I only use their stuff nowadays, as you might have seen previously on the channel, their desktop, their laptop, and their keyboard. If you need a Linux powered device and you want to buy from a manufacturer that supports Linux developments, check out the link in the description below. Slimbook is amazing. And that concludes it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like and subscribe. And if you didn't, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments. If you want to watch somewhere else than on YouTube, I'm also on Odyssey. And if you want to help me make ends meet, because this is going to be my day job starting at the end of October, you can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members, and you'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!